Today we have the pleasure of talking to Janos Kazala, a ice hockey coach in Perth. It doesn't matter how many games you win, how many how many you know trophies or medals you win, you have to show up. You will be failing a lot. There's a couple of things obviously he did uh, public, so <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But you know, so I was a lot away from home. Uh, I had a full uh, knee surgery. I snapped a couple of uh, ligaments. How did you actually overcome uh, some of these challenges? And if you're not practicing on your weakness, you're never going to achieve what you would like to be. What would be some of the advice you'd give a, a, young, a young kid? Look, what would you actually change? Is there anything that you change or was it all perfect? Welcome everyone to SPM in Focus. Today we have the pleasure of talking to Janos Kazala, a ice hockey coach in Perth, uh, having uh, played professionally in Europe as well as uh, coached in, in New Zealand and in Australia. Uh, welcome, Janos. Thank you so much for the call. Janos, this is, uh, first of all, yeah, thank you for taking our call. These are very interesting times we're living in. Can you, um, you just please uh, give us a bit of brief introduction of yourself and uh, just tell us how you actually got started in ice hockey? Uh, so I started playing ice hockey when I was uh, four or five years old. Uh, I have two sisters and they, uh, they used to uh, speed skate, uh, short track speed skate, and uh, I was at the rink all the time. Right. And the ice hockey coach basically just asked me if I wanted to try because I'm always at the rink. So I went on, I tried, and uh, I fell in love with the sport, obviously, and I'm still still with the sport. That's how basically everything started. Obviously, uh, we had under, if I remember, that was under 8, under 10, under 12, under 14, and all the way up to the ranks. So that's how the, the program worked back home, and it's still working the same way. So that's basically the, my first competition was basically the under 8 age group. Okay. And obviously, you stuck stuck with it for many years. And uh, at what time did you decide that maybe you want to go professional? So obviously, that was always my dream uh, to play professional. And uh, I always followed the games. Obviously, watched them on TV. I knew all of the the the, the players around Europe and and obviously in in the US. And uh, and uh, I was. Uh, lucky enough uh, to be good enough to play for the national team as well in in the age groups so basically first time i played for hungary when i was uh, 12 years old uh, and then from there i managed to make every single age group uh, uh, team as well and that's when i kind of uh, became a bit more a reality one day i might be able to actually play professionally as well okay what do you that i mean that's really Playing for a national team is 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 quite an achievement, you know. What uh, what do you think you did differently, you know, at 12 years old, to you know give you that uh, opportunity to actually be selected for the national team? Oh, uh, I think uh, you're just gifted. <laughs> I think I was kind of lucky enough because yes. I, I could say maybe I had a bit of a talent for sure, yes, a bit of sure. a gift, uh, yeah. but also I think. Uh, just, just you know, hard work and uh, and uh, being always there on every single training. And I didn't even miss many of the trainings unless if I was really, really sick. Mm-hmm. But other than that, uh, I have to say that uh, that was number one priority for me. Even even uh, ice hockey came first before school, which is not the best thing to <laughs> to actually say or yes. or or even having a, a recommendation for the, the younger kids right now. But, uh, nice. you know, I had uh, I had kind of a, a, a plan ahead. And like I said, lucky enough, I was able to achieve it. Okay. So you, you, you said your, your sisters were uh, speed skating. So I'm assuming they would have been probably your first uh, influence uh, to actually get into the sport. Uh, what, what are the 
influences did you would you say you had that sort of um, uh, from a young age all the way I guess to when you turned pro? What other influences would you say you had? Uh, definitely, actually, our our youth coach, yeah. uh, who was uh, a very tough man, <laughs> and he actually taught us a lot of things about the game, but mostly he taught us actually how to love the game. So he he used uh, uh, different techniques, obviously, what you can use right now as a coach, because back in the days, you know, the, the coach is very much tougher as well as the teachers, as you know. And, uh, and uh, one thing we learned from him is, and I think that stuck with me for the rest of my life, is it doesn't matter how many games you win, how many, how many you know, trophies or medals you win, you have to show up every single day on the trainings, on the game. You have to show up on every single shift you go on the ice. You have to try to win every single battle you have. And I take this to my life as well. And, and, and I think that's very important for every single young athlete as well. Just to remember, uh, if you play any sport, you're not succeeding every single time. You will be failing a lot. But the most important thing, obviously, is to get up and carry on and, and, you know, show up every single day. Even if you had a bad game or a bad training, you know, next day might be better or the day after or a week after. So that's what we learned from him is to show up every day. Don't live in the past, you know, live in the moment. Make sure you actually do your best every single time. And if you do that, you will success, you will achieve. It doesn't matter if you play a sport or, or you know, if you study or, or if you work, end of the day, if you do everything you could, you will achieve something for sure. That's brilliant. Yeah, I like that very much. I mean, most of <laughs> most success uh, really just comes from st- not giving up. Really, if you want to be successful, it's not giving exactly. up because nothing is is easy. Uh, yeah, no, nothing is easy. What um, I mean, that's brilliant advice. Uh, you know, I love it. What um, what. Uh, would you say were some practical things your coach did to to actually develop that? Because it's not most of us don't have that uh, uh, um, that programming to just you know say okay, it doesn't matter what happens. I'm tomorrow. I'm there. Tomorrow I'll be there. Tomorrow I'll be there. How did your coach actually practically develop that in you guys? Oh, there's a couple of things. Obviously, he did. Uh, some of them is probably not really. Uh, really uh, public, so <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But yes. you know, by the end of the day, he was tough. But yes. like I said, we really respected him. So yes. I think there is one one thing uh, come come into the picture as well: respect. You know, so we respected yeah. him and uh, and the way how he was uh, scorching us. But end of the day, you know, like um, helping us going through those those hard times when you didn't play well or, or, you know, when you were struggling and we had team meetings and, and, you know, uh, talks and chats and, and one-on-one meetings and, and, you know, positive encouragement. Uh, Yeah. Sometimes I'm not gonna, you know, lie. Sometimes he was, you know, yelling at us and very, very, very angry. But end of the day, we learned that quite quickly, if we do what he's asking for and if we're trying our best, you know, he, He's not going to be angry, yeah. even if we fail. We tried, so this is basically the the main principle in my life as well. Uh, yes, you know, life is like a wave, obviously, like the ocean, up and downs. But end of the, end of the day, when you're down, you need to get up and and get up to the top of the wave again and ride it as long as you can. Yes, very wise words, I have to say. Um, just on on that on that topic of of, of challenges. What um, I mean, I can imagine the life of a professional ice hockey player. Uh, it's not uh, easy every every day. What were some uh, major challenges that uh, you can share with us that you encountered, and 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 more importantly, how did you actually overcome uh, some of these challenges? Uh, you know, playing professionally, as you said, it's it's quite challenging. You know, like uh, especially uh, I started to play like professionally when I was 18. So that was my first contract uh, offered when I was 18. And I obviously was traded between a couple of different clubs as well. So I played uh, 
in uh, in one, two, three different clubs. And then, obviously, I moved to New Zealand and I played there as well for two more years. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, adapting to... You know, adapting to the new new systems, the new coaches, the new new team environment, everything. It's it's quite challenging, and and obviously the every day you train twice a day, and also we actually played in a in a international European league, which we had teams from Austria, Hungary, Slovenia, Croatia. So there was a lot of traveling, and we always traveled on bus. So I was a lot away from home, and also we had a lot of training camps before the championships. So sometimes we were away from home for a month. I haven't seen my wife or my kids. So that was quite quite tough and challenging, you know, mentally. And those days we had no no Skype or any other video call. So, you know, we just only had the cell phones. So we were able to talk. But that was quite a challenging times. But I would say actually the most challenging uh, uh, times I had to go through is, uh, you know, recovering after injuries. Because unfortunately, you know, part of playing sport, especially uh, full contact sport, is very tough on your body. So unfortunately, I had a few injuries and uh, I had two big ones just uh, back to back, basically. In 2002, uh, I had a full uh, knee surgery. I snapped a couple of uh, ligaments and torn the, the, torn the meniscus and everything. So I had actually a six month recovery after the surgery. So that was very tough mentally, but obviously I had a plan, obviously a recovery plan, which I was uh, following and, you know, uh, I had to go and do a lot of physio and a lot of stuff. So I was still busy and active, but I wasn't able to train or play. And after that, finally, when I was recovering from the, from the injury, I went back for the preseason because I had to basically uh, miss the world championships and the, the end of the season. And next season, when I went back to play for the preseason on the first game, uh, I had a puck into the, the side of my chin. And I, unfortunately, it snapped in the middle here. So I had a big surgery. I have two big plates and six screws holding my chin together. And that was very tough when I was able to play after six months coming back and, you know, get another injury. And I was out with that injury for, I think, like six or eight weeks. So that was very tough. Wow. I mean, I always, uh, I always knew that, uh, you know, uh, the game of ice hockey, there was, uh, you know, it, it's tough, but hearing you say it's full contact, that's, uh, that's quite, uh, it's quite amazing, you know, and uh, obviously you have to, you have to be especially, um, you have to be prepared, I would, I would assume, for that type of uh, contact. Uh, what, uh, with uh, a lot of professional athletes, there is, um, there is a lot of time spent in training the skills of the game. But uh, oh, I, I believe to uh, excel as a professional athlete, you also need to do some additional uh, work outside uh, the, the specific uh, sport-related um, drilling you know sort of like conditioning and strength and conditioning was that something that uh, you do and is that something that you would um, recommend anyone who wants to be professional to to invest time in outside the um, oh. the ice ring oh 100 percent and you know we tend to like to work on things we actually quite good at yeah because it's really uh, sat- satisfying when you do something and you can do and get better and better at for example, shooting or whatever, if you break down the skills. But if you're not as good skater and if you're not practicing on your weakness, you're never going to achieve what you would like to be like a professional athlete. So my recommendation is definitely do extra trainings, you know, outside of the normal training schedule. And and the most important thing is to actually work on your, on your weaknesses. That's what you want to achieve to make sure you actually get better on on your weaknesses but at the same time maintaining you know your your strength as well yeah so that's important and i did a lot of extra work as well myself yeah so just uh just on that just elaborating on that in terms of the um extra extra work um what uh, can you describe what that would look like i mean let's say um uh, there's a young person who wants to turn pro uh, they've been playing uh, amateur for a while, and you say, okay, look, yes, you can. Uh, you've got the talent. Uh, what would you say? Do A, B, C uh, outside uh, skating? Would it be going to the gym? Would it be running? What, what would you recommend as the sort of um, um, ideal 
uh, exercise or training to support the uh, uh, the skating and uh, ice hockey? Obviously, uh, for skating, uh, running is good for everything, of course. But uh, if someone has a bike, actually, biking it's 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 more closer than to skating because you're using the same muscles. So biking is actually very very good, especially spinning. Spin bike is very good. You can do a lot of interval trainings as well on them. Uh, also, stick skills, you know, hand-eye coordination, those kind of things you can practice at home with tennis balls. Uh, you know, stick skills, you you can practice those uh, special off-ice packs and uh, off-ice uh, training balls you can buy or even a golf ball. So that means you can practice your stick skills. Uh, you can you can practice different moves. You can set up different uh like little obstacle course you can go around. You don't have to be at the rink or on the ice. You can all do that. And then also, if you have a piece of plastic sheet and a bucket of pucks and you find a place there is, you know, you can shoot against like a concrete wall in a park or even a, a cricket cage here, uh, you can just go and, and practice your shooting. And that's, that's another very important thing you can practice off the ice as well. If you go and shoot 100 pucks a day, you can imagine how much you're going to improve and learn uh, when you're actually practicing your shooting and your aiming and, and everything. Just uh, you mentioned uh, practicing on the park. And um, obviously, uh, uh, when I think of the countries that have done really, really well in, uh, in world championships, they all have one thing in common, you know, they have uh, snow, you know, and, and ice and so on, you know, Canada, uh, um, the old, well, Russia still, you know, um, yeah. they, they always seem to be the top of the, uh, how do we um, overcome some that, that uh, I guess, um, uh, uh, advantage that those countries have here in Australia where we have, we don't have snow, we just have sun and heat. <laughs> Oh, it's very hard, actually. Um, but, you know, we've got obviously three ice rinks here and uh, and they open uh, 12 months a year. So there's opportunities always to actually train and get on the ice. Uh, but uh, the other option is you can do, you can actually uh, practice like inline skating, which is, you know, roller rollerblading or roller skating, which is very similar as ice skating. Uh, again, your strides, you can work on your strides and some specific skills like crossovers or backward skating. It's basically the same principle. Um, obviously, it's not the same as the ice, but better than nothing. And then also, we don't have any of the the artificial ice rinks here in, in Australia, but I know all around the world there's quite a few uh, ice rinks which is basically plastic ice and uh, they're not the same as the ice, but they are getting better and better. And, uh, and, and basically if you have access to uh, plastic ice, you can actually set up a little ice rink at home as well, or in the park and, and you can practice basically uh, skating and, and everything on it. Yeah, speaking of ice rings, opportunity to, I guess, promote, um, your your venue can you tell us uh what uh, where is your venue and what is it called the uh the ice rink that you coach at uh, i coach at the extreme ice arena uh and uh, we're running a hockey academy basically from age five till all the way up who would like to actually train so we're working with uh with uh, beginners all the way up to the higher level uh there's a lot of things i do actually like you told, you were talking about obviously extra training and stuff. So I run uh, early morning trainings, like uh, uh, personal one-on-one -on -one trainings, private trainings, which is you know focused on individual needs. Uh, and then also we run a lot of uh, team trainings as well, and and skills specific trainings for different age groups. For seniors, we have a senior uh, elite skills program. Also, we run camps. Uh, we signing up for different. Um, uh, 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 tournaments around the country as well. Uh, actually, I took uh, last year kids to overseas as well to, to play in a tournament. So there's a lot of opportunities we try to actually do here and, and build more and more connection and try to, to give opportunity for the kids or for the adults who would like to play more and, and train more. Given your experience, given what you've done, what you've seen work, what doesn't work, what would be some of the advice you'd give a, a young a young kid looking to to 
uh, potentially go professional uh, when they when they're able to. Obviously, try to set up some goals which are you know something you need to work for, but then also they they reach a goal. So I always try to set up actually a short term, a medium term, and, and, and a long term goal. When I used to play, I did the same. Now when I'm coaching, I do the same. So when I'm planning something, I always would like to, you know, set those three goals. And those goals are something I need to work hard for. But obviously, there is something I can achieve. And um, same thing, obviously, with those those kids. So first, if they set up a short term goal, which would be they would like to. I don't know, being the best player in the age group league or, you know, uh, top uh, goal scorer or whatever. If they can reach that, that means they have a great potential because they are the top of the, the age group they play. In. So they have obviously a great chance to turn to professional. But also talking about professional, there's a lot of other leagues. They are actually semi-professional as well all, all around the world. And then also there is a semi-professional league right here in Australia. So there is obviously a good chance for the kids. They are good enough. So then after that, obviously, they can have a medium term goal, which would be making, you know, the national team here in Australia, which they have under 18, under 20 uh, national teams. And if they're able to make those teams, they obviously going to go to overseas. When they go to overseas to train and play for the national team, you know, there's always scouts there. There's a lot of, obviously, other countries you go and, and play against. So you never know if you have a good tournament, you might be, you know, get get a, uh, uh, an opportunity to go and, and, and play or train overseas. And on my personal opinion, it's better to go that way to actually get approached by someone rather than, you know, you approaching schools or, or whatever, because end of the day, there's a lot of opportunities around, but if someone's interested on you, that always better than you know you try to to find a, a place to play. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. So make sure you get seen and uh, that's yeah, correct. Just yeah. promote yourself, market yourself. I think that goes yeah. with with uh, with, uh, with everything. What? Um, just to take it down a notch. What uh, What do you do when you're you know, you, you, I believe you, you're training and coaching every day. You probably train eight days a week if you could. What, uh, what do you do to relax and, uh, and, and unwind? Oh, I love uh, actually the ocean. So I, I live quite close, lucky. So I just basically go down and walk on the beach. I have two dogs. You know, I take the dogs down, go for a run, uh, go for a swim. So this is kind of my happy place. So if I, I want to unwind or anything like that, I just always go to the beach. Let's say you, you have you, you've you've had an interesting career. Uh, you know, you you played professionally. You coached in uh, New Zealand. You're coaching here in Australia. You've been all around the world. If you uh, were to uh, look back and um, what would you actually change? Is there anything that you change or was it all perfect? You know, like I had a lot of challenges in my life, obviously, as all of us. And, uh, and learning those basic principles, like I said earlier, is to never give up and, and you know, work hard and, uh, and just ride that wave on the top as long as you can. And if you go to the bottom, try to get up as fast as you can. Obviously, because I learned that during my hockey career, I think I learned one of the most important things in my life, which I follow as my as my principle in my life. So because of that, I I won't change anything. I would just do exactly the same thing what I did. Awesome. And uh, legacy. Everyone thinks of legacy, you know, uh, especially as we we're getting older. Uh, we'll start thinking of, of legacy. What uh, legacy would you like to uh, pass on to people who uh, follow in your footsteps uh, or follow uh, your your journey? What legacy would you like? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, just just you know something like uh, something like just strive your your best and you know try to try to to reach the highest goal you can you can set and. You know, try to try to enjoy every single day when you, as long as you can, 
you know, to go to the trainings and uh, and make sure you actually you go there because you love the sport. That's what I think one of the most important thing is I would like to see from the from the kids. They coming to the ring because they want to come to the ring because they they loving it. You know, it's not just the the, the game. It's actually the environment, the friends, the, the teammates. You know, the team environment and all of those values you learn when you play a sport. That's probably the the biggest thing. The love of the game. Yeah, hundred percent. The love of the game. Janos, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for. Uh, in, in, in beautiful information there, in, in very inspirational, very motivational, and we definitely need this uh, uh, in this um, current environment where you know morale may be a bit low. Janos, thank you very much. Thank you.